My name is Andy Brennan, and my wife and I have a farm winery, a very small one, where we make a product called Ehrenberg Cider. And we do, what we do is we go around and collect uh, wild apples and ferment them into cider, just as you would a wine. And uh, I just arrived at this property. This is in Sullivan County, New York. And I unloaded my truck, and I'll show you the tools of the trade. Uh, this is a tarp, which you'll need to collect the apples, buckets, and picking poles, which shake the apples out of the tree. You need a 30-year-old pickup truck and a bin, and you fill that bin and I bring it home, I put it in cold storage, and then I will press the apples when I'm good and ready, which is to say October. This particular property, we are on top of a mountain and all these apple trees here are wild. And the history of this property is, you'll see, again, we're high up in the mountain, but down there in the valley, are dairy farms and farmhouses with a few apple trees around them. And long ago, all these hilltops were grazing for those cows that uh, would come down every night to be milked or, um, or they're just coming for some candy, which is to say uh, apples or, or corn or some sort of treat. But they would spend their days up in these hills and they'd be pooping out the seeds from the apples they ate. And then about 60 years ago, everybody started buying fa uh, food from farms that were huge on the west coast. And all these farms down here in Sullivan County, they went out of business because you couldn't compete with a 2,000 acre product that was uh, government subsidized and then trucked across the country so nobody cared about local and these farms went out of business and the woods came back but amongst the woods let's back it up here amongst the woods were apple trees so when this property owner got here uh, he started clearing the hilltop a little bit for his house which is there and uh, he discovered these apple trees and he decided not to cut them down and so I forge and I will show you now what I do. Um, so I'm going to uh, put the um, camera on a uh, my tripod ladder so that way you could watch me work collecting. You could go up and pick them by hand but I don't do that usually. I usually just shake them out and collect them. But I am going to show you how I collect apples out of this wild tree here at the edge of the forest with, as you see, it's got um, Japanese barberry at the base, vines growing up, and the apples, if you can see, I don't know, are way up there. Um, so um, again, I'm going to Put the camera down and um, you probably won't be able to hear me so I won't talk much. Uh, let me get it situated here so that it stops vibrating. Alrighty. Can you see? Uh, kind of adjusting the light here so it's not so bleached out. You could see the apples up there, right? I don't know if you could hear me. It doesn't matter because I'm not going to be talking for the next 10 minutes while I work. First, I'll set up the tarps. Then I will shake the apples and then we'll collect and that'll be it. So keep watching.
this is a particularly tall tree, so I have to grab my tall pole. But you'll see I'm going to grab another tarp, and it's very necessary to collect the apples in a tarp before letting them hit the ground because under there is about Japanese barber that's about four feet high. Japanese barber is horrible. A lot of little thorns. You never collect the apples once they get in there. So um, I'm gonna set another tarp over top of that. Hopefully they don't fall in between the cracks and go in there because once they're down in that barbary i'll never get them again so keep watching i'll grab the uh picking pole and the tarp the last tarp Now you never want to rush the tarp setup. <clears throat> Every minute you spend getting the tarps right, you save five minutes collecting the apples. So tarps are important. Luckily we have a, a calm day and not a windy day to blow the tarps around. And here I'm setting up one of my longer picking poles, which reaches with my reach about 30 feet high. And as you'll see at the end, I got a little hook. Can you see? Coming at you. Here we go. Now I see where most of the apples want to fall, so I'm going to adjust the tarps a little.
think that's good.
So, uh, I reach about 30, 32 feet with that pole, and uh, I think I could clear out that tree, but sometimes I reach, I get trees that are higher than that, and I can only reach the bottom branches. Um, in the time I just shook out, that was about a bushel and a half of apples. In the same amount of time, like, you know, a big commercial orchard would have collected uh, a hundred bins. So it's, <laughs> it's just pretty much a, a labor of love. You don't do this for money. Um, but I found that these wild apples, particularly ones that are growing amongst the woods, they have, uh, they're part of the forest ecosystem. Uh, and so they express something very different than uh, farm cultivation, farm soils, uh, cod the coddling of apples that uh, basically apples are coddled as are all crops once they're in cultivation, organic or not. And I want, uh, I want apples growing in this environment as these you can see apples do grow in this environment. And uh, to me, they express what it means to truly grow in these soils. Um, so that's kind of the definition of terroir. Um, you see, it's not a lot, but um, if you want to watch uh, again, what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll um, put the camera down and uh, take about five minutes to go through and collect the apples and we'll count how much we got. <clears throat> so we're going back to the, the ladder here where I'm going to set you down. This work. Uh, hold on a second. Almost. I feel like that might be good enough. That's good enough, right? Okay, so it'll be about five minutes uh, as I collect it. First, I need to uh, get a couple bushel uh, buckets, so that'll take a minute. So just keep watching.
So now we're, I don't know if you saw all that, right now we're out of the barberry and I've consolidated the apples onto a couple of tarps and I'll show you what we need to do. By the way, I just got stung by a bee, which is common. Uh, it went up my pant leg. But uh, most of these apples are pretty clean. But we're going to go through them now to make sure we don't have rots. Because you'll see some. Uh, some are less than perfect. And some might have some rot on it. There's one that has some rot. So I don't really want rot because that sort of uh, can become vinegar. It's pretty bright here. Uh, you could already see the yeast growing on the apple. So I don't know if that's the, um, the yeast I want to ferment. I have a pretty good culture in my barn. So uh, just using what yeast is on the apples now. Minus a potential Cetobacter vinegar yeast. Uh, we're going to basically grade them while collecting them. And as I said, there's like a half hour for about a bushel of apples, but you've heard of slow food. Well, this is about as slow as it gets. And uh, um, the trade off is uh, quality. And I don't know if. Most people don't even care about that. They just want their food fast and easy, so, um, and cheap. So, um, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, uh, it's just not what I do. And, uh, and, uh, here for this final segment, uh, I will, uh, <clears throat> be collecting the apples, but I, I'm going to, uh, probably cut the video short um, after about a minute. So I just want to say thanks for watching. Just like, uh, just like uh, slow food, if you um, are watching this video through the whole way through, you're obviously a different kind of patient. And uh, I like to think there's a uh, reward for those types of people. But, um, um, yeah, like I said, this is uh, a fairly uncommon way to uh, get your food, get your cider. Um, it used to not be uncommon. Uh, sadly, it's, um, yeah, it's all but disappeared, but, um, um, making somewhat of a comeback, uh, at least in the cider world. Um, and uh, I'm not the only one. There's other people foraging out there now, and I think it's um, uh, I think it's a um, um, a healthy way to to um, to drink. Um, philosophical question I don't know if uh, you really want me spending the next hour talking about but um, certainly it's um, um, certainly this seems to be the uh, extreme end of uh, one form of cultivation and um, whether or not you believe in um, um, heavy sprays and gene manipulation and the economy of scale and industrial um, uh, distribution and all that um, that's um, that's one extreme this is the other extreme and and chances are um, everybody falls somewhere in that scale um, so anyway yeah I'm gonna set the camera down and again you uh, will watch me just basically collect the apples and grade them into buckets and that'll be it so thanks for watching
go. It's a bushel and a half of apples the hard way. But as you said, you could do things the easy way or you could do things the fun way. And apart from the chainsaw in the distance, it's pretty quiet and peaceful here. And I like that. And I like the company of these trees. You always leave a little bit at the top. See if I could zoom in there. Hard to see, but I always leave about five. 10% in the tree for the deer because that's how the apple trees got here in the first place. An animal ate it, spread the seed, and hopefully somewhere in there another apple will be born. That's how nature intended it. Signing off. Bye-bye.